Hi everyone, my name is Mercy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here. In this video, I'm going to continue on with the World Concept Series, specifically talking about heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, also known as HIT. So if you're interested in learning the um, scenario, what the mechanism is like, and how to treat, keep on watching. <laughs> Type 1 and type 2 uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, also known as HIT, like I said before. Um, but the type 2 is the one that's autoimmune, whereas type 1 is not autoimmune. You don't really need to know about the type 1. Type 1, you don't even uh, have to treat because basically it is a reaction against the heparin and um, it's usually within 48 hours, so after starting heparin. So the one that we need to particularly understand is the type 2. So it doesn't have to be just heparin, it can be the lower molecular weight heparin as well which uh, for example anoxaparin that's commonly going to be um, used so if you get anoxaparin you want to think okay that is a lower molecular weight heparin so don't just disinclude uh, hit because you think anoxaparin is lower molecular weight and it shouldn't have a heparin reaction it can have a heparin reaction right so what's the vignette going to be like it's going to bring up how a patient had a venous thrombosis and they're being treated with a drug so not only do you need to recognize that it's a hit but you also need to know what you need to treat the problem that they're presenting with so the patient comes in with um, D vein thrombosis and now uh, you've treated them with this drug you send them off home and then they come back in a week and you get a lab report on them because usually that's what you do after a week of heparin you check their labs to see what's going on and when you get the lab report you see that the platelets have decreased by 50% over 50% of their platelets have declined a normal platelet count is between 100 to 250,000. So if a patient comes in with 200, let's say, and now they have you know, 75,000, now you're going to think heparin-induced thrombocytopenia because they just started with heparin not too long ago. A major clue is going to be the decrease in the platelet count by 50% at least. It could present with symptoms, um, which will be like the ecchymoses in that region that the heparin was uh, put in. Most likely they'll give you a history of deep vein thrombosis, giving heparin, they come in five to 10 days later, and now you're going to uh, diagnose them with HIT. How do you treat it? What is the mechanism of action? So remember, heparin should not have anything to do with the platelets. So remember, heparin is involved with the coagulation factors. It inhibits the intrinsic pathway so it's going to involve the uh, factors and it's going to affect PTT time mainly the only time the playlist is going to come in hand is if there is a heparin induced thrombocytopenia so what's the mechanism of action essentially what happens is whenever uh, some people take heparin the heparin is going to cause a reaction against the platelets so the heparin is going to induce the platelet and uh, change its conformation. So heparin induces the platelet and changes the conformation and now you have different antigens around the heparin and that is going to cause an autoimmune reaction because remember originally these platelets had a different conformation and your body already knew and recognized it so it didn't produce anything because it's in no self. But now that there is a change the body is going to react against it and it's going to produce antibodies. Specifically you have IgG antibodies that are going to be against these platelets antigens that have uh, been induced by the heparin and now you have destruction of these platelets by the spleen mainly so the spleen is removing it and it's being destroyed and therefore you have thrombocytopenia however there's also something that is going to be really important to know because this is actually a question that i got wrong because i totally did not know that it actually also causes um, thrombosis so with heparin not only does it change the conformation of the platelet to form the antigen um, so then the body uh, reacts to it and destroying the platelets but it also causes an activation of the platelets essentially what happens uh, with the thrombosis formation is that the heparin is going to induce the platelets and activate it so that activation of platelets causes thrombosis effect these platelets are going to aggregate causing thrombosis it also increases the release of procoagulant uh, factors so procoagulant factors are going to be released and also so you have these platelet aggregation so it's super important to know that you have thrombosis formation they might ask you what is a complication 
what's a risk factor for a heparin-induced thrombocytopenia if it's not treated? It could cause thrombosis because of that platelet activation that the heparin causes and the release of procoagulant factors. So therefore, you're going to recognize that, that it can cause both venous and arterial thrombosis, which gets me to the treatment. As soon as you identify that it's a hit patient, you're going to stop the heparin or the lower molecular weight heparin, and you are going to then treat them with another anticoagulant that doesn't involve the heparin mechanism. So you're going to give them, for example, argatroban. That is going to prohibit the thrombosis formation. So that's why it's really, really important. Not only immediately stop the heparin, but also provide them with another anticoagulant so that you uh, inhibit that thrombosis formation, therefore not putting your patient at risk for arterial or venous thrombosis super, super important. It's not going to cause a vasospasms or any aneurysms or um, hematomas or any of that. It is going to cause thrombosis as a risk factor for a uh, hit. So always make sure you're treating the patient with another anticoagulant to avoid the thrombosis formation because heparin induces the platelet aggregation. So how do you confirm that it's hit? You confirm by using a serotonin release assay. That is uh, going to be asked. I remember seeing that in the question uh, for sure. Okay, so I really hope that was helpful. Please make sure to uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and do share my videos as that will be super helpful. And follow me on my Instagram account, Mercy Medical. Um, I have Snapchat, Mercy Medical, as well as Twitter. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, guys.